Hi, my name is Boeing Up Hugh, and I'm a playwright and an actor. I was born in Vietnam. I moved over here when I was eight, so that's 13 years now. And I've been in Kansas City since then. I love it here, and I love creating art here. So. born in um, Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City and um, yeah it's it, over there uh, Vietnam actually we were like very enriched with like art and music and theater and stuff like that is one of my first like theater performance I've seen was like this like musical kind of it's like a folk tale musical for kids and there's like dragons and like mythical like Heroes fighting dragons, saving the the greater like greater area of like Asia and China from these like creatures. And I was like, when I, when I was a kid, I was always in love with like theater. I, I guess I didn't really realize it yet, but I always loved just like I loved I always loved dancing. I started like break dancing when I was a kid. And I know like when, I, when my brother's wedding, they had like a stage, and I was like, brother, let me go up there and dance for everybody. So I got to like break dance for my brother's wedding and I, I've always like really liked it but like but one thing about growing up in America as like a Vietnamese person, an Asian person, it sometimes does get hard and there's this pressure to be what they what we're expected to be like doctors, engineers, um, pharmacists and and I mean just looking at it like all my friends, Vietnamese friends, Chinese, like my whole entire friend group they're all, the all in pharmacy school, and one of them is, a, is in the, the he's going, he's becoming, he's in med school. And it's, just, it's just like, and I only know one other person, my friend Nam, who who went to school for English and became a teacher. But like, but well, aside from that, like I don't, I didn't really know any Vietnamese people outside doing the arts, and it was scary to like tell my family that's what I wanted to do. One thing that I think made me confident in it is I joined them. Um, I, was, I went to Oak Park High School, and I did uh, my first year, uh, uh, not my, my junior year, we did, um, I joined I joined my senior, my junior year, and we did Almost Maine, that was super fun for me, I played Pete, and then my next year we did uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare, and it was a hard, it was different, it was like, it's hard, it's like, it was Shakespeare, and like I'm like this. I always felt unconfident with my English, and it was interesting. But like, but I I made the show. I was the bottom, and I took. Um, it was really fun to do Shakespeare for me because in my head I was like, dang, this is cool because I'm some. They always ex I'm always this person that's like English has been a struggle because it was like my second language and people see me differently. But I'm able to like take this like English that some it's even hard to under, hard to understand for most people and I'm able to like dissect it and I took it to um, uh, Kansas City Shakespeare uh, competition and which had uh, Sidney Garrett as one of the uh, the judges and I got second place there's one story with my uncle I, I, I it, it's it's been a chip on my shoulder but also it's been something that pushes me which he told me like telling me like, be careful, like, are you sure you want to do this? You know, like, what makes you like, why would they catch you over like this white person who has the same credentials? Um, and I was just like, I don't have an answer for you. I, I don't know. Maybe they won't. And, but I think now that my answer for that is maybe I make my own art, tell Asian stories where they can't cast this white person. They have to cast me, an Asian person. And that's, that's, I think that's become my, I found that's, that's going to be my solutions for this is like make art to tell the story of my family and me, which I've really recently became a lot closer with my family. Um, my grandmother recently passed away and it was a hard time because it was during like um, the whole pandemic and we didn't get to see her for a whole year and then she was diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer. But in, you know, but she lived for a long life. She was 91, and she has 10 kids. Crazy woman, amazing. And she somehow, like, in her, like, before she passed, she brought all of us together. 
like because I'm all my family together, and I got to like like see the like, the love and like like the bound the 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 bound. I'm trying to find the word like uh, the connection and the and the bond the bond of like our family and our culture, and and there's this thing what you do when in Vietnam when someone pass when your family member passed away it's it's these the next 49 days. Um, every seven days for seven weeks, you meet and you celebrate them, and so like more than you celebrate. We 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 would have like a ceremony for her at the temple. We have we come together and eat, and I got really connected with my family, which was really nice for me recently because I, one of my my the story of Medicine Man is the play I just recently wrote that won um, an award with Kate Cat Kate Cart. And they they're producing it on August six. Uh, oh, they're airing it on August six on KKFI at noon. And it's coming on their podcast too. It's one of the character in there. It, it's her name's Xiao, and it's supposed to represent my grandma. So it's really nice that she's getting like form of a second life, a, a past life in a way. In a way, she like her energy and her influence, and we got to stick around, got to pass on, and someone's gonna get to know her in in a way. And that's really nice for me. And the story itself is about my great grandfather, the medicine man. He was a medicine man, and he was sadly like murdered by French soldiers before he could pass pass down this or the family generation, which has been going on for like four generations, is of like medicine man. And it, it, it died. It ended with him because, uh, well, from what I to I'm told, is um, he. The French were just burning like anything that look that could look like war plans or anything, and they just thought. But that they were his medical like records, so he went and protected it, and he got killed. And the sad thing was like my grandmother was of age to like learn all those things, but at the time, you know, it just it just wouldn't work because like they they didn't believe like oh, she could do it, and like mm. second of all, like if she got become a medicine man, and she, if she gets married, they don't want to leave the family and all this stuff. But I was just like thinking like, but what if like my grandma just like fought for it and like just got to be a medicine man or something, like just fight for it and like, keep the, her, her roots and because she, from the, way she from, from the way she talked about it, she loved the fact, loved the fact that my grand, great grandfather was a medicine man and, and that he was a very kind man that saved others, that helped other people around him. But I was the finalist for the Kennedy Center um, uh, playwriting like uh, competition. Yeah. You like college students competition, and that was, and which is interesting because I wrote it as a stage play, and for KCAT I had to transfer it into the radio space, which was interesting because I had to like pretty much cut all stage directions, and now I have to find a way to like bring those stage directions in the sound way, which is a it was hard but. He also created some pretty interesting ideas for me and sounds and stuff like that. Like we have such a rich culture, and like we have fun, and we're, we're like, and that we're just like normal. We're other people past this Vietnam War, you know. Like I feel like everyone just like from when I was young, all I, all they've known about me or about Vietnam is through the Vietnam War. But we have so much culture past just that, just that trauma, and I wanted to. I think if, if anything, I want to show that, show the beautifulness, it's not the right, not, screw it, beautifulness of the Vietnamese culture. You know, like the, the vibrant, the family, even, even, the, even the, the bad parts, maybe even the loudness, the sometimes too much, too mean in a way, like too, like they, I know like it's a fun fact, like I mean like, like um, my family, uh, my one of my like uncle, like it's like missing, like like missing part of his finger, and like that's something that I always make fun of him for. And like, it's like it's kind of rude, but like, but it's like they sometimes they take it too far. But they're they're funny people. We're fun people to be around, and I, yeah, and they're and they're worthy of like their story being told. You know, like I. I love like one thing is I, I I do enjoy theater now and like all the stories that are being told, but I clearly see that there's not enough story about Vietnamese people. Like the only story I can story I can think of this is because I, I lack reading and stuff like that. But one of the biggest one is Miss Saigon, and 
to be honest, I kind of hate it. I hate Miss Saigon, like, in a way. Like, I, it has some beautiful music, sure. But, like, it's, I think, from what from far as I know, it's written by, like, these two French dudes. And I just found it so ironic because, of course, the colonizer is taking my culture and making millions out of, out of it. And yet I'm getting that. And then, so, yeah. So, because one thing in Miss Saigon I realized was I was, I, it really bothered me because especially when I was dealing with my like having fail um, going through stuff with my grandma because like at the end she kills herself so her son can go to America to go to America and when that's not reality like um like a loving Vietnamese mother would never like do that she would fight with like every like ounce in her body to stay alive and keep like and be there for her kid like, she would not give up her life to let the kid go to a place they, they, they don't know. Because actually there's a story, because my one of my uncle has a, he's disabled and there's, and um, a, a scientist, a, some kind of doctor reached out to my grandma and was like, oh, he, he has this rare disease. We would like to take him to America and like figure out a way to help him. But even then she's like, I don't want to leave my, I don't want like, to, you know, to take my child. I want, I would take care of him. It doesn't matter because in the process, she would have like lost connection with her kid, and and she chose to like live with. And my grandma chose to live, you know, my grandma, because after the war, we our families uh, fought in this war south from the south. My grandpa was a general for the south, so we after the war after we were not treated well. But I mean, I mean it was hard, and we didn't have any money, and she had ten kids, so. Um, she, I heard stories, I mean, I know actually this, this they told me like my grandma would, work, would walk like 20 kilometers every day just to go like sell random like materials just to make some money for us. Like where every day she would walk like 20 miles, back, uh, 20 kilometers, miles back and forth just to like provide for us. She would like work whatever she could to make, sh like to do it with her own hands. She, and, and yeah, and I I guess I want to show like also the view. The, the how they determine we are like that in a way like how strong we are of, of people I want people to have a little bit more like lenience on people who don't speak English very well I think it's like I noticed something was I come to the realization it was like I mean I was like pretty much like bullied growing up for not like speaking English very well and I like I would go home and like practice I was like actually I had to practice English and people don't realize that we do that. Like it's hard. Like we, we go home and we, we we practice and we like write the words down like a hundred times to learn this language. Like it's and people don't. Like I one thing I noticed my family is like they told me to like make sure you speak really good English or they'll think you're uneducated. You're not smart. Even though like it's hard. Like I know for a fact. Uh, like my brother, he spoke somewhat of like, to them broken English, but like. He spoke really good. But compare, like, if he, if they, if if, if you get like, if white people and or not just Americans, like, had to learn a new language, like, they would be speaking at a level much poorlier than him. Like, their four year Spanish in high school is nothing compared to his English. And they, when we praise those people, but we don't, but they, we don't praise these immigrants who, like, drop everything from their lives, move here, and like learn, appreciate this, your art. I mean, American culture is great and, and the, our language, the language is beautiful and I'm glad I got to learn it. But, but like, um, I don't think people, people just, instead of like seeing like if they don't know English well enough, this maybe they're not trying hard enough, but that's not true. And cause like, I know when like a, like an English, like American or a white person like speaks Vietnamese, even though it's like crap, like it's like horrible accent, not pronouncing it nearly correct, but then we, we like are so happy. We're like, oh my God, that's amazing. Thank you. Like, we're so happy to hear someone like speak our language because like they, they, they feel like they appreciate us. And I don't think Americans sometimes think that like us learning English is like us appreciating them and they, they take it for granted. In the pandemic, I read, uh, God, I can't think of his name. It's like a, he wrote it's um, the theater and it's double and uh, and it's uh, it's refer it's comparing the theater to a, a plague, which is very interesting to me because it's like 
it's you know same way that theater and art has the same ability of the play where like where we we can see the like like truth like we see like people drop their like we can drop the the fakeness of our, 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 our lives and like stuff that we do and we see the true or our true nature we stop pretending to be in the social cloud oh, it's hard we not all the way but like yeah like that so that's interesting i think the biggest one for me is learning to like work for yourself in a way like like be like i think be selfish in you know like not in a way where it's like right for yourself because like because once you do, you, I, I found it like once the more like specific and like more like selfish you, you your work is in a way, like you actually reach more people. Oh, I mean, I uh, if the Delta variant is like getting better, I do hope to see live theater again. That is because it's it's so magical every time I see it, and every time I see like theater, like the like it. it, it it makes me realize, dang, I did choose the right career. Cause like, I love it. I just really love it. Like, it's, I think that's the most important part. And I, and I'm, what personally, you know, what I'm excited for is, I mean, in a way, my own future, like my own, uh, I'm excited for the Vietnamese people and, and the Asian, and Asian people. Cause I feel like, you know, like this is our time. Like we're getting seen right now, like more than ever at least, and, but it's still not enough, but, but we are, and that's exciting. And I'm happy that that's it's happening. I'm so glad that it's happening. So yeah, I want, and I guess for my work is like I, since I told earlier, I talked about how I dislike um, Miss Saigon. I'm kind of playing and writing some uh, like a response piece. I'm not sure it's a play, a movie, a TV show. I'm not sure, but I'm I'm thinking of writing a response piece. Of okay, let's say this kid. This, the end of that story happened. This kid went to America. What happens to him 15 years later? How hard is his life like being half, half um, American, half Vietnamese? And, and if he lived in America for, for 15 years, and with a, his dad who was a white guy, he, I doubt he knew Vietnamese. And what happens if he meets another Vietnamese person at school? And that, that's, that's something I'm, I'm exploring and I'm, I'm working on.